So hello and welcome to our intro session on the NBA from Grenoble Lake Holder Management. Uh, this webinar will be recorded and we will make it available to you on our website and after the call. Um, so we ask that you please take the time to enter any questions you may have directly into the chat. And this is our favorite part of the webinar in which at the very end, uh, we will engage and with you and answer any questions you might have about the program uh, directed to, to anyone here presented today. So please go ahead and enter your questions in the chat and we will get to them at the, at the end during our Q&A. Thank you, Jenny. So I guess we'll start by introducing ourselves. I'm Jenny Hinderscheidt. I'm the head of marketing for the MBA and the DBA. Great, so I'm Chandra Delpont. Uh, I am the MBA program director for our full-time and our part-time program. And I'm uh, Michele Coletti. I'm Associate Professor of Innovation uh, in uh, here at the Grenoble Code Management, and I'm also the Professor of uh, Innovation Management and Consulting Related uh, Models. Hello, I'm Saloni. I'm a former uh, MBA graduate of Grenoble Equality Management, and currently I am in mm. Germany working for PwC. And thank you for joining us, uh, both of you. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> All right, just quickly review our agenda for today. We will start with Chandra, our program director, will give you a little bit of the framework of the program. And then Professor Michele will tell you a little bit about the classroom experience of live business cases and dive into um, how, th how this is applied. And we have our alumni example, Saloni, who works with PwC, who will show the impact that the MBA has had on her career. And then we will open it up to Q&A. Thank you, Jenny. Great, so I just wanna tell you a little bit about the MBA program. So obviously I'm going to focus more on the full-time program, which is what we have based out of Grenoble. Our part-time program is based out of Georgia, which means the country, so Tbilisi, uh, Georgia. And our full-time program is a 10-month intensive program. And I think what really stands out is the exceptional amount of hands-on that we have, experiential training, which is why we're going to talk a bit about consulting today, because um, I think, for example, our live business case that we're going to mention today as well uh, is really part of that ex applied experience. So here, uh, it's a 10-month program. And, well, uh, this is a start, these are some examples. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> it's okay, you flipped ahead. So I'm excited. Oh, I heard you say live business case. I'm like, <laughs> exactly. So um, here is Michele. Uh, we just had this uh, meeting with Beckton Dickinson. This is an example of, uh, of a live business case that we're going to be um, doing with uh, Beckton Dickinson, which is an American uh, company, but we also have a uh, a full site here in France, a uh, very large site, and we're going to be working with them on their live business case. So this is kind of continuity of uh, the consulting uh, class that Michele teaches. But I just wanted to say that the program is really very much, very much experiential. We do have um, a lot of case studies, of course, in the classroom, but we go beyond that. We do corporate visits. Um, we have speakers who come, of course. Uh, we do our corporate expedition where we go around and we visit companies. We do a lot of team building, uh, personal development, of course. Uh, we do Process Calm, which is also a personal development tool. Uh, so we spend 10 months really intensively uh, working together and working with the corporate uh, environment and ecosystem around us. And so perhaps Michele can tell you a little bit more about uh, what we do more specifically with the uh, corporate context that we have in the area and beyond. Thank, thank you, Chandra. OK. Uh, I guess maybe we can come back to it. We show a few, a few photo, nice photos of the uh -huh. MBA. Some yeah. of the experiences that we Chandra, have. Do you want to, maybe you want to uh, present now what is uh, besides uh, consulting, because uh, all these beautiful uh, pictures, uh, maybe people Potential students want to know, OK, what I'm going to do in these 10 months. Uh, yes, peaking curiosity. So if you want to go back uh, just a second. So obviously, I kind of mentioned that they're perfect. Um, this is a picture of our induction week, for example. Uh, the pictures on the left is where we actually worked with theater. So theater about uh, um, uh, your managerial presence, basically, we worked on that. So we did some skits um, talking about the kind of issues that managers face these days and did some role playing. 
Uh, so it was kind of a way to ice break and go through some of the experiences people had already had in their in their companies and the way things have been handled in the past in their own experience, how things could be handled and things like that. So it was a very different way of looking at um, dealing with the problematics that are managed by um, by you, by the MBA candidates, by people who, uh, who have experience already in the field. So that was a, a lot of fun, obviously. Um, we took some time out and went up to the top of the Bastille which is one of the famous points here in Grenoble. Spent some time, had, had a nice uh, lunch at the restaurant at the top of the Bastille. We did a tour of the city. Again, we're able to spend a cultural experience here in France, as well as, uh, of course, in the classroom. So we take it out of the classroom. We go to companies, like I said. Uh, perhaps we can go on to the next slide. And this is especially true, for example, when we go on our study trips. For example, we're going to Berlin in uh, two weeks, uh, where we're going to be. <laughs> so, Loni, I know that you had the, the COVID experience, so it was a little bit uh, of a different uh, uh, time back then. Of course, you're welcome to join us on, on a study trip, and huh? you just let me know. <laughs> I know it's not, very, it's not very exotic because it's Germany this year, but, um, but we do our, our study trip. Obviously, Saloni is based also in Germany, but perhaps Berlin might be a little bit more um, exotic than uh, um, where you are at the moment. Um, so we have uh, our study trip to Berlin where we're going to be focusing on uh, digital transformation. Uh, so the tech ecosystem and so on. Uh, and we also spend time in Paris. If you choose our luxury specialization, you spend three weeks in Paris. So broken up over three different specialization weeks between, for example, uh, March, April, and June. Um, but we are based here in Grenoble. We do visit a lot of companies here. This is where the balls are at the top of the Bastille. And for the finance specialization, there's talk about going to our partner in Tbilisi, Georgia, um, because the uh, specialization weeks do encompass the part-time students as well as the full-time students. Right, next slide. And of course, this is our corporate expedition. So as I said, we explore our, our local ecosystem, which is always interesting. This is a, these are some of the, uh, the photos where we have done some wine and cheese tasting. Um, we have gone to uh, some amazing restaurants and visited the luxury ecosystem in uh, five-star uh, tourism and uh, Michelin star restaurants, uh, as well as the Chartreuse factory. So this is the distribution of the Chartreuse liqueur. And we have done some serious game playing, which is something that is very much key to part of the process and the learning uh, here at GEM in the MBA. So very experiential. All right. And so I will hand it off back to you mm -hmm. about the MBA class from Michele. Thank you, Chandra. Uh, now I see that uh, having some pictures is very nice to show what you are doing. So I promised on LinkedIn that I will not show any slide, but that uh, means that I, I will talk, hopefully not too long, for not too long. The idea is uh, that uh, no, uh, brought us to organize this uh, webinar is uh, what's special in the GEM MBA. And uh, I'm a believer that uh, the GEM MBA is a great uh, program for people that are consultant or would like to become consultant or both. I see uh, Saloni nodding. I'm very, very glad about that. She will explain that I'm not just uh, uh, saying something that works in theory, they work also in practice and her uh, uh, path shows that. But anyway, management consulting has been almost a staple of GM MBA for uh, more than 20 years now. There was a specialization. I was an alumnus of the specialization. Then when I became a teacher, uh, I uh, coordinated for a few years. Now, uh, uh, management consulting is uh, so such an integral part of the program that has been integrated in, uh, in the core modules. So, uh, each of the students that we enroll in this program will have the opportunity to attend a, a module specific on these issues and then a live business case that Chandra has already mentioned. Uh, my, my personal experience, again, I was a, a, a professional consultant in, uh, in Italy when I attended my MBA almost 20 years ago now. 
and uh, uh, then uh, uh, I stayed afterwards, uh, but uh, surely it benefited me a lot, uh, this program, because actually I was uh, a consultant in my own country, basically with uh, domestic assignments all the time, and uh, the teachers that I had here, they exposed uh, me to a business environment that was international and it's completely different from what I used to know. Um, so this is uh, the experience that I, I would like to share with uh, uh, the, those that are listening to this webinar, uh, whether they think uh, to, to the, that consulting can, can be an option for them, a professional option of them, or whether they are already in consulting as I was, but they want to go to the next level. I think that uh, is a great opportunity. We try, as Chandra said, we try to be as much hands on as we can, to involve as much as possible uh, practitioners, or even myself uh, with a now mixed profile, uh, academic and practitioner. Uh, we do a lot of work uh, with uh, uh, companies. Uh, Chandra showed us the uh, pictures from uh, BD of last week, basically, so they are very, very fresh. Uh, but uh, myself, I try to have uh, to involve uh, a range of companies over the years, but in, let's say last two, three years, we had uh, small uh, local companies uh, like Panorama Alps, and we find uh, them interesting because, you know, there are, uh, there are people, uh, local people that cannot afford the consulting services, uh, so we give them an opportunity. Same uh, social enterprises, uh, we had a uh, uh, social enterprise, for instance, that uh, we try to do it at the international level. We had uh, Belicious, uh, that is an Indian entrepreneur uh, focusing on uh, uh, bee, on a, pro uh, on a production and uh, uh, involving women in, uh, in this uh, business, uh, very, very interesting in terms of impact. We had uh, someone uh, that has a, a organic farm in Tanzania and uh, we had larger companies like Continental, uh, like uh, HP, we have even consultants that asked us uh, to assess uh, certain markets. Uh, most of the live business cases that we do are strategic in nature. So maybe, maybe about uh, growth, uh, options for growth, uh, differentiations in different markets. Uh, so, you know, students love this kind of uh, work and we try to have uh, at least two uh, companies for, for every intake because, uh, uh, you know, this is a business uh, and this is a trade that uh, you learn doing it. This uh, theory is important, but certainly is not enough. So why, uh, why you should come uh, to, to GEM? I think I say that already. Uh, we really understand consulting as a business and uh, we really give you the tools that are uh, necessary to, to, to do consulting as a, as a trade. And uh, uh, so you will not find in the modules of consulting any additional tool. We, we think that the other modules that you will have here in strategy, in marketing, in human resources, we provide you with the basic knowledge that then we, you will be able to mobilize, to apply for the business case that you will deal uh, with. Uh, what to add? I think that uh, uh, the best case that we can show is Saloni. And uh, so I remain available if there are questions uh, during the webinar or even later, but uh, maybe Saloni can confirm or not uh, what I'm saying. All right, we'll hand it over to Saloni to yes. maybe if you'd like to give a little introduction to um, tell us about your MBA experience, where you're working now, and how you're able to use the MBA for your current career. Perfect. Thank you, uh, first of all, for uh, the great introduction. As for myself, I'm currently uh, working in uh, PwC, Germany. I was previously based out of Berlin. 
and currently I have moved into um, Dusseldorf or Essen to be precise, which is nearly like 30 minutes from Dusseldorf. Uh, my first, uh, first of all, a great, great thank you to all my professors. Uh, when I first uh, landed in uh, France, it was COVID <laughs> and uh, it was the year 2020. Uh, but uh, so we were actually having hybrid classes, but uh, the interaction, the networking, the support that every professor gave us individually, like as a team, um, it was truly beneficial for us not only for uh, securing the first step of the internship, but also like um, changing the whole pathway, a career pathway from myself as a software developer to currently a consultant in uh, a big four. So um, for that, I'm like truly, truly grateful. Uh, the three main points I actually found in as a student in GEM was uh, firstly, there are a lot of nationalities that were present. So not only did, uh, did we try and connect with people from different nationalities and their culture plus their expertise, but also we were put onto teams where we had to do a numerous of projects, live projects, as well as um, obviously um, professional as well as personal projects so that we can integrate the same thing in the university as well as take the same idea towards our career. The second of all, there were different courses set up for us. I was I was uh, uh, like having an and um, my specialization in BD, but um, we were given ample amount of supports like Michelle was in innovation. We had F, like we had finance from um, we had uh, business development in different, different charismatic teachers. And of course, um, it was not only uh, like interacting with them with just a subject, but also their own past experiences on how they were correlating to modern day um, businesses, companies, careers, etc. And uh, GEM as um, like our, our own program to shift one student from academics to professional areas is like huge, like I suppose uh, Chandra can uh, put put on light on how Virginie actually helped me from transition to the whole point. But yes, um, so that I'm like really thankful for, and um, they are the reason why I'm here today, um, doing doing what I'm doing currently. Yes. Yeah, great. It's true that it seems like. Uh, you know, obviously you had an engineering background and then, you know, with the MBA, I saw that you had moved on uh, from your engineering into Schneider where you had your internship and here you were, uh, you were consulting for them or you were working with them on, on their project for your internship. And then you moved into Germany where you became a consultant for PwC. So it really was an interesting transition um, going from engineering into uh, solid consulting for, you know, one of the big five. So that's interesting. And of course, you know, as you said, I think that was a difficult time. You know, we were in the middle of COVID and it's true that our career center is extremely dedicated, especially um, uh, Virginie, who is really someone dedicated specifically for uh, the MBAs. And she's very much focused on student services. And uh, of course, she has a, a very good, I don't know, how would you say, like a, a feel for what's actually happening in uh, the offers that are happening and aligning them with the people uh, in the MBA that she definitely thinks uh, fits. But obviously you did all the work because that's, you know, the role of the student. It's not the role of Jen to get you an internship, but to uh, present you with the right thing in front of you and for you to to make sure to nail it, shall we say. Thank you. Yes, uh, <laughs> but uh, like um, I, it wouldn't have been possible if the direction was not correct. So step by step by step. So thank you. 
Yes, yes. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, and I think uh, something that also you said, Michele, which is interesting and that's very important when we talk about consulting is that it's kind of the capstone. You know, it really is what puts everything together. It's a nice challenge, but, you know, you have to be have been prepared with um, the kind of uh, methodology and, and analysis, you know, as you were saying, talking about uh, strategy. And I know that um, now we have kind of a new focus or deeper focus on uh, our strategy. We've kind of combined sustainability and the sustainability uh, class into strategy. We've made it a larger global and more solid uh, focus, which is basically called transforming sustainable business strategy, because the idea is that we're going to spend more time on focusing on long-term solutions and long-term strategy. Um, so the kind of analysis and the kind of thought process that needs to go into the creation of your strategy is a little bit deeper a little bit more uh, focused on on a sustainable durable um, uh, situation for each company but you know we go through a process in the development of the program where we go through the different things that you have to learn uh, for example on the analytical side of course we look at um, what other MBAs might look at you know accounting and, and finance and things like that um, you know economics and so on but you know, operations, project management. So kind of the, what I would call the basics, the fundamentals um, uh, for what you'd need to get through. But uh, beyond that, you know, we do need to also looking at how we create the project. So we have to analyze the strategy, put in place a strategy, put in place a project so that strategy will succeed and then also leading change. So, you know, we have classes like a, a leading teams and transformation very much focused on how you engage and enact that change for the success of any kind of transformation. Um, as a reminder, obviously, the program is about strategy and the strategic uh, change process. So I think that the consulting needs to come at the end because you've you've done your, your homework and you've really learned about all these different aspects that need to be tied in, including marketing and strategy and um, you know, different business models and uh, understanding the, the focus on clients and things like that. And then be able to put it in place and help uh, lead a company through a process to give them the right solution. So, so this is the way that we've created it through the program. So Michele has kind of brought us through innovation and then also, you know, thinking about focusing on the client and then and the solution and then uh, going on to uh, the consulting on how to help a company through to that. Great, good. So perhaps, I don't know. I, I know we were trying to be kind of quick through just delivering some information about that. Perhaps um, we can. So don't why don't we just take it just a quick second to recap a little bit of what we just discussed, some of the highlights of the, our MBA, where people can find resources, um, and then we'll dive into the q and I can turn Perfect. off mics and um, and cameras, if, if people feel more comfortable. Again, this is being recorded, so, um, but maybe we'll start with that. Shonda, would you like to just maybe recap some of, some of the MBA highlights? Sure, of course. So obviously, you know, GEM is one of the top-ranked schools. We're triple accredited. We're also in the QS and the Financial Times. Um, so those are kind of important markers when you're going to be talking about quality and making sure that we have put in place um, some serious quality controls uh, in order to be deliver something that is not just quality, but it's also helping students to achieve their goals, like Saloni, uh, to get the right you know job at the end fairly quickly <laughs> um, after graduation, and sometimes even before. A lot of the students, for example, right now in my current intake, I have a lot of students who have already secured jobs um, immediately uh, starting in June, and they finish their classes <laughs> in June. This is the uh, the internship phase. Uh, and people are already getting uh, their positions secured then. So this is the kind of thing that's very important. Um, what's also important to think about when you're choosing your MBA is also the ecosystem um, that it touches upon. I think the, the idea of the companies, the surroundings, and the values uh, are important. So I think Renewable is you know, based at that interesting crossroads between, you know, the sustainable and the tech, obviously with the Silicon Valley of France, and at the same time, we're the green capital of Europe. So we understand that one cannot be run without the other, and they're both important uh, when you're considering uh, moving forward into the future with um, um, the evolution of where companies are going at the moment. We talked about the fact that this is experiential learning, either through 
you know, all the expeditions that we do, sometimes we have alumni come back and speak or even come back and teach. For example, Michele is, of course, one of the alumni from the program. Mm -hmm. So um, so this is the kind of interaction that we have. And I think the fondness that the, the alumni have uh, as well. And we're building upon that uh, alumni network uh, as we speak because we have over 2,200, so that's 2,200 uh, MBA alumni out of the 47,000 alumni at GEM. So we do have a very international uh, footprint. We're not just in France, but we're 2,200 around the world. Um, so that's important to understand that wherever you go, you'll bump into one of us, <laughs> which is good for networking. Um, but as I said, it is, um, it's very much full-time, very much intensive. And part of that intensity is the specializations that we offer, um, which means that you're going to have 30 hours uh, three times, so a very intensive week focused on one of the four specialization that we offer at the moment, which is basically entrepreneurial mindset, um, marketing, which is focused on the luxury sector in the transition uh, period of sustainability. It's transforming towards a sustainable um, model, shall we say, a sustainable product, sustainable models, um, as well as an advanced uh, business analytics and, of course, finance. So we have these four specializations, they're very focused and they add on top as a deep dive to the core courses that we offer. Um, our values, I think when you're thinking about um, going into a program, you also need to think about your values and are they aligned with the school's values? Um, being that we are a Societe à Mission, which is like a B Corp uh, in the US, um, that we have a very strong movement internally to, to push that forward. I think that's very important. And I know that Michele is part of that, so it's it's wonderful to have him <laughs> focused on that in his programs um, towards innovation and sustainability. Uh, we talked about already about the expeditions um, and the business trips. And to understand, like I say, this is not a French program for French students, but this is really an international program for international students. And perhaps, and then you could talk about in your experience in the international sector, you know, the number of teachers that are always, you know, coming through the door are, are always, you know, different every day. It could be China, Brazil, um, you know, Italy, of course, the US, Canada, um, Australia. I mean, it could be, you know, Lebanon could be from anywhere, really, um, as well as the students. Uh, so this is, these are some of the highlights of this kind of I would say life-changing experience. So Saloni, do you have just a word about the internationalness of the program? Yes, um, so uh, we met during during our time, we met um, teachers, um, professors, uh, as as um, Michelle, then we had Phil, and then we had um, one of the Indian um, ethnic, ethnic teacher, but he was actually a British. So we had uh, we had uh, him for our um, um, another course. We had Australia actually there. And then, um, of course, um, I mean, if, if we are actually kind of naming different parts of the world, we would find it in, we would have found it in our class or like in our team, as well as there was a huge huge uh, variety or diversity of teachers, not only uh, whom we were actually having classes, but also there were different webinars and, and workshops that were, we were doing time and again. We were connecting to different people from different parts of the world and naturally getting in inputs. Uh, there we were uh, talking not only for finance or like for um, maybe luxury development, but we were also trying to focus on how we could incorporate the things that they were telling into whatever like whatever background I am coming from. For example, um, I was a software engineer in India and and then uh, so my background was uh, computer science engineering and then I shifted on to project management in, in India again and then here in the MBA, I, I learned digital transformation. I learned consulting, marketing, uh, business development, innovation, and, and everything like 
I actually wanted to do an internship here in the European soil because the transformation that that would give me uh, towards my work or the career that I would choose next would be immense or like the career graph would actually increase. So then I took on the role of an analyst in Schneider and there I was working on digital transformation as a risk analyst as well as consulting and where I could actually jot down okay so consulting might be one part that I would really focus my like I would really hope to look myself into in the next coming five years and then it was uh, going on to the companies next so yes all th like Networking in in GEM was huge. I mean, a huge benefit, a huge, huge benefit. Thank you, Sanoni. Thank you very much. Great. All right, so I think we'll just. Yeah. Just want to just briefly touch on where we can find out more. So there's quite a bit of information on our. Oh, yeah. Sorry, yes. There is, a, uh, there is a question in the. Yeah, I'm going to get to the questions in okay, just okay. one second. And then we'll open it all up to QA. Okay. So we have some information on our website, of course. Uh, these are our local agents. So if you would like to speak to somebody in your area, uh, we have we have Gem uh, staff who is willing to help you with your application, answer any questions you may have, um, and might know a little bit more about your personal needs because they come from your area. So there, you can find their contact info on our website. Also, Chandra here will answer any questions you might have as well. Um, and once you start an application, we have an amazing admissions team that will help onboard you. So we're ha all of us are happy to come together and answer any questions you might have. And now we'll open it up to Q&A. So you're welcome to either type your questions into the chat or I will um, unmute the microphones and allow videos if you prefer to, to say it out loud. So we have one question about scholarships and Chandra, maybe you would like to talk about our scholarships for the MBA. <laughs> it's my favorite subject. No, it, it seems to be the subject of choice at the moment, which is normal. Um, so um, normally there's not a specific scholarship per country. Sometimes you can get scholarships uh, coming from your own government and things like that. However, what we offer is going to be a scholarship based on either needs or um, by um, capacity, I would say. So for example, if you have a, uh, a STEM background for example you might apply to the stem background so science technology math uh, and engineering for example or perhaps uh, if you have a diversity for example you may be coming from a, uh, a lesser known or a lesser represented country for example you can uh, put in for that scholarship so we actually have a variety of scholarships so you can apply to all of them and therefore they do apply to you uh, so you can go ahead and apply to those and just remember that you can only have one at a time, one scholarship at a time. And I think it's written on the uh, aid website about the general percentage of what students do receive when they're coming in. I think I was saying that in general they receive uh, 10%, but up to 30%. And we are starting to launch a new program which is in line with our research chairs. So we have some special research chairs, um, including a, a UNESCO chair, which is the chair for culture for economic peace, which is basically focused on, uh, I think I was talking about earlier about strategy and talking about sustainable uh, futures. So again, it's not just focused on sustainability as in green, as in climate change, but about you know, the way you work with your partners, finding different kind of solutions on the way you work with people, um, leading people, collaborating, uh, and things like that, basically focused on long-term relationships, long-term strategy. Uh, so we have something like that. Um, we have Women for Economic Renewal. Uh, so all of these chairs, you can look through the GEM website, and we have specifically uh, three of them, um, which we are focused on, on giving scholarships for and to do that you'd need to write an essay so but we can talk about that separately if you like Chandra before the, yes. we move to the next question I would like to add because Christelle is a very likely a woman I would like to add and as you mentioned the chair 
Women Entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. that uh, this MBA has a very strong gender balance. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, I sure. think it's very, very important uh, that we mention that uh, it's not, uh, you know, the usually male dominated program. Uh, uh, sure. I think maybe you can say something about that. Thank you for bringing that up. Actually, that's that's important. And Saloni, you were nodding. So I guess that you felt that there was a, a lot of parity in the in the program representation. That's good. It's true that the you know, when we look at the averages of MBAs uh, worldwide, usually they're very much male dominated, uh, which means, you know, in general, you're going to have maybe a third uh, women. But in general, we are much more rebalanced uh, towards like a 50-50 balance. This year, we actually do have literally 50 and 50. Um, mm -hmm. So it's very nice. I think that it encourages you to feel more comfortable when there's um, um, a balance, shall we say, uh, that could be either in nationality, that could be in background, that could be in age, that could be, you have to have a diversity. And the fact that there's more of a gender parity um, it does help, I think, as you said, Michele, to encourage and foster this kind of sharing and um, perhaps, um, I don't know, allows you to speak out more um, as, a, as a woman to feel kind of empowered that you're not in an imbalanced situation, you know, um, shall we say. So thank you for bringing that up. Right. Okay, great. So what you're asking is the alignment in between. Um, so if we normally work with specific companies each time, and then if there is a, a specific conduit for being hired from those companies, is that kind of the question? Yeah. Okay, I got a thumbs up. <laughs> okay, I guess that's it. So, um, you know, I think we like to keep it diverse. And um, we don't have a company that we always work with every year. Um, and in fact, this was the first year we we have made a very... Um, significant live business case because I think Michele, as he said, he's worked with HP, he's worked with a lot of different companies through each of the classes in each of the modules. Um, in, and perhaps I'll let you address that, Michele, but this was the first year where we worked with um, a kind of substantial two-month program. This one is the, it's a two-month program where we have um, something kind of meaty to, to look at and something very, um, a complex uh, question to, to answer. And so we don't have anything specific that we do every year, but we have a big ecosystem here um, in Grenoble. So perhaps, Michele, you can answer yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, it's true that uh, uh, previous years, uh, mainly the students that were dealing with consulting and also sustainability, there was a specialization on sustainable business, uh, were very much exposed to live business cases. So, uh, um, now, from this year, since uh, Chandra took uh, the direction of the program, uh, this has been extended to every student. So it's, I think it's very positive. This uh, I uh, often invite uh, in the in the modules uh, people from Accenture, people from Capgemini. Uh, Sometimes the teachers uh, are practitioners of these uh, companies, uh, working in these companies, so you have a direct contact with that. The career center organized from time to time career fairs in which these big companies are present. So this is also an opportunity to meet them personally. And then there is another factor that I think you should consider uh, is internal consultants. As we have a lot of large companies uh, in which our students uh, then are, uh, are hired, uh, uh, several of them become internal consultants. And uh, this uh, maybe is not uh, the kind of consultancy that we think of when we talk about management consulting, but is a very important role uh, that uh, many students are, uh, are happy to take. And uh, that is a little bit uh, uh, somewhat more difficult to, to track as uh, individual opportunities. But when you talk with the companies, uh, you may find many of these uh, internal consulting profiles. Yeah, and I think I also, they will. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Um, sorry, no, I was just going to say, and, and as far as the hiring process, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that we uh, have done the consulting for them, but there are companies that we work with, um, you know, and I think that we have representatives uh, internally that do help us. You know, I would say that alumni are also another key way to kind of get your foot through the door 
uh, in a lot of companies like Saloni at, you know, PwC in Germany. <laughs> but mm. no, <laughs> there are a lot of companies. We have Accenture, we have Ernst & Young, we have PwC. Um, so, of course, we have the big five and so on, but um, uh, Capgemini and, uh, and so on. But again, there's two things to consider. One is language. Um, it is kind of important if you're going to be working in a country and especially for consulting, um, consulting companies do favor people who, who can speak uh, almost a native level of um, language of the country that they're going to be consulting in. So that's important. I'm not saying that uh, France is impossible. It could be also that the MBA in France is a gateway to you know, go to work in Luxembourg or go to work in Germany or go to work in the UK, et cetera. Once you have your MBA, um, you can then migrate to uh, another uh, country nearby. So I think having these people, these alumni in the, the consulting roles, or even as Michele was saying, you know, becoming an internal consultant, um, these are, are options that once you get into the MBA, you start to think about things a little bit differently. I think, than uh, perhaps what you had thought of before. So um, so I would say that it may not be as linear as you expect, but um, there's definitely some open doors. Oh, that's great. And I'm sorry, I just wanted to say to reinforce what Saloni had said earlier, that we do have an excellent career services um, department along with career fairs. So between all of these different options, there, there's quite quite a bit of opportunity. So the main difference between the MIB and MBA program is that the first thing in MIB, if you are entering into any kind of professional exper experience, that it will be as a fresher. So, and into an MBA, you will be asked about your exper experience or expertise that you have carried on along the past three years, four years, five years, or whatever has been your professional experience. Secondly, yeah. when you are entering into any kind of internship, if it is if it is leveled up to um, a professional or you're joining a company or or maybe working in any kind of uh, that can be in any kind of programs, whichever you are you are enrolling into, then it it um, like the government actually wants it to have a payment, like the company will be paying you for your internship. If you are joining another kind of internship where you are just enriching your own expertise, that will be an unpaid internship. So it will completely depend on the company or the organization that you are uh, enrolling yourself into after the intensive program of MIB. For an MBA, the chances of getting the paid internship exp uh, like increases exponentially because there are there are core companies that are already in Grenoble, situated in Grenoble, which can give you great exposure into the whole of European region that can be France, that can be Germany, that can be Netherlands, Belgium, Switzerland, Luxembourg, whatever, like whichever country comes to your mind. But the main core areas is actually there in Grenoble. There we have Capgemini, Schneider, ST, STM, um, like microelectronics. So whichever pathway you are choosing, you can actually get into it. So uh, it will completely be depending on you whether you take the MIB or the MBA. But yes, there is obviously an, a difference on what you get paid in the internship and and the amount or like whether uh, so whether they are wanting freshers or whether they are wanting experienced people. Yes, and some of the subjects may be similar. However, the challenges that the, the teachers will give to an MBA is going to be different than the challenge that they're going to be giving to an MSc or to a bachelor student because we have all of those programs. But even though the concept is similar, it's going to be at a much deeper level uh, of challenge because they're going to have a higher expectation. Right, Michele? We have a higher expectation of MBA. Sorry, you're muted. <laughs> I don't know. I, I was following you, but I was I was following you, but I was trying to 
how to say to to rephrase it in my own terms. And I would say that an MIB uh, is very much about uh, acquiring knowledge. So, OK, you learn how to do or what are certain things. In the MBA, knowledge is somewhat you are supposed to have it. I'm an alumnus of the MBA, as you said, but Chandra, you are also an alumna <laughs> of the MBA. True. And uh, when we did it, we knew already a lot of things that uh, then were uh, introduced to us by our teachers. What we didn't know is how well we could apply them. I remember personally a teacher at the time, and she was a, a really a master of the BCG matrix, the, the standard strategic management tool. I knew it already, but thanks to her, to her, I learned really the deep meaning of this tool and how to make it work. And uh, then, you know, OK, it's not just a tool that you know, it's a tool that you can leverage on and that you can use it uh, in your uh, daily job as a, OK, in my case, as a consultant and so on and so forth. So really, there is no, uh, no comparison, even though on paper the, the modules look similar, they are very different. But again, th this, I think there is a trap there. Because if you are not mature enough and you go for an MBA, it can be disappointing. Because uh, the not only, yeah, Chad explained already, no, every student uh, is uh, supposed to contribute, but every student is supposed to have the maturity to contribute. And if you don't have this, you will not uh, be able to, to get um, to make the most of the courses. Yeah. So if you are, I don't know how old are you, but if you are in your late uh, 20s or early 30s, think, OK, if you are 40, I guess that uh, if by 40 you don't have enough experience to go for an MBA, maybe you should forego it. But uh, uh, again, if you are at the beginning of your career, think twice uh, and maybe we can consult you uh, in, a, in a separate uh, uh, meeting. What is uh, the best option for you? Yeah, or obviously Nishit's team can, can do that for sure. But just there was a really quick question I just wanted to address um, before we kind of go back to the, the live business case, because I wanted to talk a little bit about the consulting process um, about the average age. And I can tell you that our average age, just like the fact that our classes are better balanced female and male, um, it's a better balance than average. And the average age is higher than the average. So our incoming global MBA is more is a stronger one. Um, and we do have people who, for example, I just ran into a student who's in his second year this year. He came in, he had already done a PhD. I have somebody who came in, they already have masters. So they don't necessarily come in with just a bachelor's. We have people who have done their PhD. We have people who have done their masters who are coming back to now get this kind of broad strategic view and how to put in place um, in leadership roles, this is really what an MBA is. So just to, to explain to you the difference in between MBA and MIB. But just to go back and, and kind of wrap this up, um, I wanted to just talk about the process of consulting um, and how we, we put it in place because really the live business case is kind of the applied part of the consulting class. And the consulting class should be part of the core competencies in um, in an MBA because I, I believe, we believe uh, that consulting can be either external or internal, but it's a consultancy mindset that you need by the time you're finished with your MBA because you're able to put everything together, make the right analysis of everything, create a proposal as a solution, put in place a project to run that solution, and then um, make sure that the change happens internally. So being able to speak to all of the different stakeholders and all of the different business units and understanding their needs and understanding um, how to speak to them, that is what the beauty of an MBA is. And therefore, putting it together and through the live business case, which is one of the last classes uh, that we have uh, through the program, where we work in groups. So here in the photos, you see that we actually have divided in the top two photos into two groups that are actually divided into two other groups. And each group is made up of basically four people. Um, each, we had two different dilemmas. So one dilemma on the left, one dilemma on the right. 
And in the dilemma on the left, we have uh, the question of the public use of the BD tools. Becton Dickinson is a pharmaceutical delivery tool, um, and it's much more, uh, uh, it's an international company, like I say, and this is so, it's an international problem, but how do they apply it in France? And we have a public aspect. What do we do in hospitals? What do we do in the public financed sector? And then the other group is going to be working on the private sector. Um, and so the students are very happy to, to work on these challenges. So I just wanted to kind of wrap that up and talk about how it's organized. It's over two months. Um, BD came, I, I talked about it in my LinkedIn post today. Uh, they launched the session, they explained their problem. We asked them <laughs> tons and tons of questions to understand what their problem is, just like any consultant would. Um, and then we take time to work together uh, to try and analyze it, um, do some benchmarking and create a solution. And we have touch points with the teacher who's going to guide the students over the two months um, to make sure that they're making the progress, that they're asking the right questions, that they're not stuck. And we have a touch point uh, privileged touch point with the company and each group is going to work with them. And at the end, we're going to pitch uh, like in front of a jury. So they're going to do their business proposal uh, and two, uh, two teams per uh, problem, shall we say. And they're going to propose their solution to Becton Dickinson and there will be a jury from Becton Dickinson. There will be the teacher, which is Michele and there will be myself and we will judge the performance um, of the group um, in their professionalism, in their um, objectiveness and their ability to analyze and in their potential solution and the viability of that solution. So there we are. Thank you, Maybe Chandra. Mm -hmm. uh, there, is a, there is a question for you, Chandra, in the chat. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, are we talking about Andres's question? Yes. yes. Okay. About, can you Provide a little bit more information about the final the final project. Okay, and so is that that might be the thesis? I just wanted to make sure is yeah. is that the thesis or is that for the live business case? Because live business case is basically an oral presentation uh, done by four people. It's subdivided, and you get used to doing presentations and group work, yeah. right? So, Loni, like every two weeks, <laughs> you've got something to present, and you really have to work collaboratively collaboratively together with people who have experience in a variety of different uh, sectors: marketing, law. Um, engineering, et cetera. Um, and then you have to, so you do a, a general pitch and then you also do an individual paper uh, with your own personal recommendations from your own angle. Um, but so that is the live business case. But if we're talking about the thesis, um, so we also have a thesis that we have to do to graduate, of course, it's a very, it's a substantial study. So it's the applied research project, uh, applied research project. It's it's not substantial in the number of words, but it doesn't mean it's going to be easier because being concise is actually more challenging than uh, writing a huge volume. It's, hu it's easy to make a, a study and to do a huge volume uh, of um, in your final thesis, but it's much more difficult to try and make that concise, which is actually a very good business acumen is trying to, to be concise with the delivery of your, of your ideas. Uh, it's a basic research paper, I would say, either quantitative or qualitative. Um, and we do a research methodologies training of 30 hours to make sure that you understand quantitative and qualitative research methodologies as, as writing, <coughs> so your research, literary research, et cetera, and then your delivery. And that also is tutored um, by your research uh, thesis tutor. I hope that answered your question, Andres. If you had other questions, Obviously, it's uh, 6.03 right now. So if you have any other questions, um, I think it's probably best um, that we can, <laughs> okay, great, Hello, that we can go ahead and answer that uh, outside of your, uh, of the session, just to make sure that everyone has time to, to go. But I'm happy, we're happy to, to chat, happy to discuss. Um, we make ourselves available either through LinkedIn or via email. And it'll be available through the slides, as Jenny said. And I'm sure Saloni would just love Pavan. a question or two. Yes, Pavan. Yeah, just uh, one or two questions uh, for clarification, my doubt. Uh, first, uh, what I have asked uh, is uh, about a specialization. As uh, now, as currently, we have seen about the agriculture. So I want to know just about the agriculture specialization in agribusiness management which is uh, provided by or not uh, by grownable 
No, I don't think so. Perhaps you're confusing it with another oh. school. Um, Grenoble is more of a tech center. It's true that we're in the mountains and it's absolutely beautiful. And we do have fields around us, okay. but agriculture is definitely not the home base here in Grenoble. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's what I have to ask about the Grenoble. <laughs> okay, sorry. I just listed four. So basically, you have marketing through luxury and sustainable uh, uh, advancements there and the adaptation. You have the finance, you have the entrepreneurship, and now you have the um, business analytics. So those are the four. Great. Okay, good. Okay, thank you, everybody. We'll have another info thank session you, Fauzi. in just a couple of weeks. Uh, so if we didn't cover your points, we have another professor, uh, an amazing professor, um, who will be presenting with us, and you'll get the experience of another student. Um, so you'll receive a mailing soon about that. Thank you, Andres. But of course, all of us are available to answer any questions you might have. So please feel free to reach out.